I really want you all to see this recipe. It's for a new American buttercream. Now, I've invented it because I hate traditional American buttercream. That's the one where you cream butter until it's light and fluffy, add in a ton of powdered sugar, and then like milk or cream to thin it out. The thing is, is that we have to add so much sugar to the butter in that recipe that it affects the sweetness. It's like super sweet, and then it's very gritty. Now, the recipe I'm gonna show you today is far smoother. It's a little bit less sweet, uses only a few ingredients, comes together in minutes, it frosts well, it pipes well. Bakers, this is the whole package. This is a good one. Let me just show you how I figured it out. Okay, here are the main ingredients and amounts we'd need for a traditional American buttercream. And I've scaled down a recipe so you can see the ratio of sugar to one stick of butter. So we've got butter, powdered sugar, and water, which can be replaced with milk or cream. Now, butter has water in it, about 20%, and it's evenly dispersed within the butter fat. Sugar dissolves in water. In fact, it loves water. The term for this is hygroscopic, but there's an upper limit to how much sugar can dissolve in water. So let's try to dissolve this amount of powdered sugar and about the amount of water that's contained in one stick of butter. I can stir and for the most part it seems wet albeit very thick and pasty. Now imagine this sugar paste in one stick of butter. The sugar won't dissolve in the fat or the oil. It can only dissolve in water and if I give it a taste it's like crunchy almost super gritty I can taste the cornstarch that's often added to powdered sugar so that it doesn't clump when we buy it. The sheer amount of sugar that we're adding to a buttercream, what you're looking at right here is why these buttercreams are so gritty. The, the sugar simply has nowhere to go. So what is the maximum amount of sugar we can add to butter that will dissolve in the water contained within without it being gritty? There's actually a word for this. It's called solubility. And sugar or sucrose has a relatively high solubility in water. It depends on the temperature of the water, but for room temperature water, it's about one and a half times the weight of the water. So notice how it's far less than the initial amount that I showed you, but this this is what will dissolve. When I taste it, there's no grittiness. And the scientific reason for that is the water is pulling the sugar apart from each other, kind of isolating them and evenly dispersing them inside the water and making the sugar molecules so small that they're almost indiscernible for the human tongue. Now that I know that the butter is only able to dissolve about 25% of the powdered sugar that I was using, in my regular American buttercream, I have to add some other sweetener. And what I'm looking for is a sugar that's already dissolved in something or a syrup. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the sugar section of my pantry and I have various sugars that are dissolved in water already. So we have honey, it's deformed bottle. We've got molasses back there um, and maple syrup. Uh, that's the fake kind, I love that stuff. Uh, but what I'm looking for is this one. This one is corn syrup, that's what I need. Oh, and, and a side note, don't be weirded out about this ingredient. This is not high fructose corn syrup. This is just glucose, probably a little bit of maltose and water. High fructose corn syrup and, and fructose in general is not problematic. It's the quantity in which Americans typically consume it because food manufacturers tend to use a lot of it. So the key is really just like moderation with everything, right? Okay, so now that I have the right amount of powdered sugar to use in my buttercream without it being overly gritty and some liquid sugar to boost the sweetness, let me show you how it all comes together. And the first thing I'm going to do is whip the butter until it's light and fluffy. Here's the texture of my butter, but honestly, it doesn't matter. I've done this with butter cold from the fridge. It's just gonna take you longer to get to that texture that you need to move on to the next step. And notice that I'm using the whisk attachment. It's far more efficient than the paddle attachment at pushing air and into the butter or aerating it. All those wires are excellent for aeration and emulsifying, which is what we'll do in the next step. Now take a look at the color and texture of these two butters. On the left, we have whipped, and on the right is the unwhipped. Aerated or whipped butter is softer, slightly more voluminous, and paler in color. Air has pushed the yellow butter fat apart slightly, making it seem more white. You'll want to wait until you see that your butter looks like this, because that means that it's the right temperature and texture to receive the corn syrup. Now, continuing with the whisk attachment, I'm going to add the corn syrup a little bit at a time and then mix. Now, once all of the corn syrup has been added, let it whip on high speed for at least another minute, scraping the bottom if needed to make sure everything has been mixed in. So we've already added the corn syrup into the butter. Now what I want you to do is taste it. 
This is to give you a baseline of how sweet you want this frosting to be. Taste is totally subjective. What might be too sweet for me might not be sweet enough for you. So this is gonna dictate how much powdered sugar you're gonna add into the next step. So then go ahead and add in the powdered sugar, which you don't have to sift. And as for the amount in my recipe, I'll give a little above the maximum amount of sugar that is dissolvable, considering all the water that will be available. There still will be a slight graininess when we use this amount. I found that we need that extra boost of sweetness to get it right. It's not gonna be as smooth as say a Swiss meringue buttercream, but it's far less grainy and gritty than our traditional American buttercream you may be used to. If you need a stiffer consistency or a sweeter taste, it can definitely handle more, but just know that the more you add, the more gritty it will become. And you may be wondering why I even add powdered sugar. Why not just use all corn syrup? Well, corn syrup is a liquid and it's also less sweet. The primary sugar in corn syrup is glucose and that's less sweet than sucrose table or powdered sugar. And the amount we'd have to add to get a good sweet buttercream will probably exceed the emulsion capabilities of the butter. But there's also another advantage. The syrup is liquid, so there's no need to thin it out to get the consistency right with extra milk or cream or water. You really only need these three ingredients, butter, corn syrup, and powdered sugar. Oh, and flavor if you want. So I do add a pinch of salt and a glug of vanilla. You can also add a touch of purple gel food coloring to offset the orange and yellow hues like I'm showing here. At the end, you can switch to the paddle attachment to smooth out large air pockets, but I think you'll find that the final buttercream is pretty smooth. Another question you may have is whether you can use another type of syrup. The answer is probably. Corn syrup just offers us a flavorless option than say honey, which by the way, I have tested. It is glorious and that version of this buttercream will probably be up in the calculator soon. Now, a video of mine wouldn't be complete without a proper analysis. I mean, the stuff does taste amazing, but how well does it perform? So let's look at piping. This is what I call a level one test for frosting because it's not hard to pipe onto cupcakes. It's always a bit discouraging when a recipe blog talks and talks about how great a frosting is, but only shows me how it pipes onto a cupcake. Seriously, I've spent too many hours researching and testing frostings to know that cupcakes are level one, like easy peasy. There's no external pressures on the frosting, nothing to hold up, just has to look pretty. And this one does, so check. All right, level two is smoothing on the outside of a large cake. And this is my sprinkle 2.0 recipe, and I'm gonna use three layers here. And I'm going to use this new American buttercream to fill, crumb coat, and top coat this cake. Does it smooth nicely without having to be fussy to work with? Absolutely, this stuff is just as easy to frost with as it is to make. It's spreadable, smoothable, and because of the corn syrup, it has very few air bubbles, so very easy to work with. I'm also testing how it accepts color, which I didn't anticipate any problem with, but as you can see here, I'm getting a gorgeous pink color from some gel food coloring. And my level three test, the last test is the most extreme. Can the frosting hold up the cake layers or withstand pressure over time? For this test, I left my decorated cake out at room temperature out of direct sunlight for 24 hours. I monitored the temperature and it ranged from about 73 to 78 Fahrenheit, depending on the time of day. All right, so there are three things that I typically look at when I'm judging the stability of the frosting. So I don't see any bulging. That's the first thing. That means that the frosting is able to withstand pressure from a heavy cake. This is a pretty heavy cake. The other thing is the smoothness. Was it able to kind of keep that smooth texture for the sides? That's why I left the sides of the cake really plain so that we could assess that properly. And I think it looks rather nice. And then the third thing is any kind of leaking or loss of definition from piping. And from what I did yesterday, it's pretty much still intact. It's holding up the sprinkles great. Okay, I went ahead and grabbed the traditional American buttercream, the one with no corn syrup that I made yesterday. Also left it out on the countertop so I could do a comparison between the two. Okay, give this stuff a taste. Okay, here's what happened. Overnight, because I tasted this frosting yesterday, the excess powdered sugar in this recipe has further dissolved in the liquid contained in the buttercream so that the, the finished buttercream today actually has like 2% of the grittiness of this buttercream. So I'm excited for you all to try this frosting. I'm gonna go ahead and enter it into my calculator. It's where all my recipes are kept. Uh, let me know if you love it. Let me know if you hate it. The whole point of all of this, the channel and the calculator is to be helpful. And so with feedback, I'm able to make it better for you guys. And with that, 
I'll see you next time.